Sandman Stories presents Story number two from the South African Folktales book by James A. Honey. This one is called The Monkey's Fiddle, and it's about a monkey who gets some really cool presents, but then is accused of theft and has to prove his innocence. Okay, let's begin. The Monkey's Fiddle Hunger and want forced Monkey one day to forsake his land and to seek elsewhere among strangers for much-needed work. Bulbs, earth beans, scorpions, insects, and other such things were completely exhausted in his own land. But fortunately, he received, for the time being, shelter with a great uncle of his, Orang Utang, who lived in another part of the country. When he had worked for quite a while, he wanted to return home, and as recompense, his great uncle gave him a fiddle and a bow and arrow, and told him that with the bow and arrow he could hit and kill anything he desired, and with the fiddle he could force anything to dance. The first he met upon his return to his own land was Br'er Wolf. This old fellow told him all the news, and also that he had since early morning been attempting to stalk a deer, but all in vain. Then Monkey laid before him all the wonders of the bow and arrow that he carried on his back, and assured him if he could but see the deer, he would bring it down for him. When the wolf showed him the deer, Monkey was ready, and down fell the deer. They made a good meal together, but instead of Wolf being thankful, jealousy overmastered him, and he begged for the bow and arrow. When Monkey refused to give it to him, he thereupon began to threaten him, with his greater strength. And so when Jackal passed by, Wolf told him that Monkey had stolen his bow and arrow. After Jackal had heard both of them, he declared himself unqualified to settle the case alone, and he proposed that they bring the matter to the court of Lion, Tiger, and the other animals. In the meantime, he declared that he would take possession of what had been the cause of their quarrel, so that it would be safe, as he said. But he immediately brought to earth all that was eatable, so there was a long time of slaughter before Monkey and Wolf agreed to have their affair in court. Monkey's evidence was weak, and to make it worse, Jackal's testimony was against him. Jackal thought that in this way it would be easier to obtain the bow and arrow from Wolf for himself, and so fell the sentence against Monkey. Theft was looked upon as a great wrong. He must hang. The fiddle was still at his side, and he received as a last favor from the court the right to play a tune on it. He was a master player of his time, and, in addition to this, came the wonderful power of his charmed fiddle. Thus, when he struck the first note of cockerel upon it, the court began to show at once an unusual and spontaneous liveliness. And before he came to the first waltzing turn of the old tune, the whole court was dancing like a whirlwind. Over and over, quicker and quicker sounded the tune of Cockro on the charmed fiddle, until some of the dancers, exhausted, fell down, although still keeping their feet in motion. But Monkey, musician as he was, heard and saw nothing of what had happened around him. With his head placed lovingly against the instrument and his eyes half closed, he played on, keeping time ever with his foot. Wolf was the first to cry out in pleading tones breathlessly, Please stop, Cousin Monkey, for love's sake, please stop. But Monkey did not even hear him. Over and over sounded the resistless waltz of Cock Row. After a while, Lion showed signs of fatigue, and when he had gone around once more with his young lion wife, he growled as he passed Monkey, My whole kingdom is yours, ape if you just stop playing. I do not want it, answered Monkey, but withdraw the sentence and give me my bow and arrow and you, Wolf, acknowledge that you stole it from me. I acknowledge, I acknowledge, cried Wolf, while Lion cried at the same instant that he withdrew the sentence. Monkey gave them just a few more turns of the cock row, gathered up his bow and arrow, and seated himself high up in the nearest camelthorn tree. 
the court and other animals were so afraid that he might begin again that they hastily disbanded to new parts of the world. The End Story number three from the South African Folk Tales by James A. Honey, The Tiger, The Ram, and The Jackal. This is a story about how the ram tricked the tiger into being afraid of the ram, and so lived to see another day. Okay, let's begin. The Tiger, The Ram, and The Jackal. Tiger was returning home from hunting on one occasion, when he lighted on the crawl of ram. Now Tiger had never seen Ram before, and accordingly, approaching submissively, he said, Good day, friend. What may your name be? The other, in his gruff voice, and striking his breast with his forefoot, said, I am Ram. Who are you? Tiger, answered the other, more dead than alive. And then, taking leave of Ram, he ran home as fast as he could. Jackal lived at the same place as Tiger did, and the latter going to him said, Friend Jackal, I am quite out of breath, and am half dead with fright, for I have just seen a terrible-looking fellow with a large and thick head, and on my asking what his name was, he answered, I am Ram. What a foolish fellow you are, cried Jackal to let such a nice piece of flesh stand. Why did you do so? But we shall go tomorrow and eat it together. Next day, the two set off for the crawl of Ram. And as they appeared over a hill, Ram, who had turned out to look about him and was calculating where he should that day crop a tender salad, saw them, and he immediately went to his wife and said, I fear this is our last day, for Jackal and Tiger are both coming against us. What shall we do? Don't be afraid, said the wife. But take up the child in your arms, go out with it, and pinch it to make it cry, as if it were hungry. Ram did so as the Confederates came on. No sooner did Tiger cast his eyes on Ram, than fear again took possession of him, and he wished to turn back. Jackal had provided against this, and made Tiger fast to himself with a leathern thong, and said, Come on! When Ram cried in a loud voice, and pinching his child at the same time, You have done well, friend Jackal, to have brought us Tiger to eat, for you hear how my child is crying for food. On these dreadful words, Tiger notwithstanding the entreaties of Jackal to let him go, to let him loose, set off in the greatest alarm, dragged Jackal after him over hill and valley, through bushes and over rocks, and never stopped to look behind him, till he brought back himself and half-dead Jackal to his place again, and so Ram escaped. The End